This picture of Christ, which was discovered hidden in an outhouse, looks remarkably like the Turin Shroud, doesn't it? It's 13th century, and it's believed to have belonged to an order of fighting monks who lived around here and even gave this village its name. They were called the Templars, and this is Templecombe in Somerset. Can Time Team find the remains of where they actually lived? And who were the Templars, anyway? So have a cup of tea, Tone. Cheers. Where do you reckon these Templars might have lived then? Well, somewhere on this site over the back here, I reckon. What we're going to do is look at the building itself, have a good old uh, look at the structure, you know, see what we can find. But uh, my guess is they're living somewhere out the back. What are we looking for? Well, I think if we can define the, the area that they occupied, then almost certainly there would have been halls, barns, a chapel, you know, bakery, brew house, that sort of stuff inside there. So this is a little monastery yeah. inside a defined wall? Yeah, with a gatehouse and a ditch around it, that sort of thing. We ought to go off and have a look and see how they're getting on, actually, with, okay. the, uh, with the survey work and starting to open up the trenches. We've been invited to Templecombe by a modern-day Templar. Jeff Wilson bought the manor house because of its connection with the medieval order on which the present-day charity called the Templars is based. He knows the Knights Templar owns the manor here in the 12th and 13th centuries, but he wants to find out how much of his home dates back to those original fighting monks. The house has a 17th century appearance, but appearances can be deceptive. So we've brought along Berwick Morley, our historic buildings expert. And I'm told this is the remains of a spiral staircase. Oh, I've heard about this. Oh, that's right. Well, look, it curves round at the back. Beric's starting with a grand tour of Jeff's home, which we've invaded for the weekend. The house has been repeatedly modernised since the 1600s. Beric's job is to discover if there's anything Templar hidden inside or below the present building. Oh, this is a nice room, isn't it? Well, this, this big room, but I think it's been made into one room. It was several rooms. If we, yes. There's the front door over there. Oh, yes. yes and Along the floor, underneath here, there's some flagstones. These are oh, much yeah. more worn up this and out that end. But it, where the door comes, there's a row of narrow ones, as though there was a wall up in between. And it turns a right angle here and comes over to oh, block the stairs Gosh, well, that's good. Beric's already that's noted good. that Jeff's house has been built back to front. Its more imposing face points eastwards. He's also intrigued by its unusual L shape. Could this red-roofed long range here be medieval in origin? but it's around the modern farm behind Jeff's house that Mick thinks we'll find the boundary that enclosed our Templar site. So we're down at the south end of the site now, Tony, and when I came and had a look earlier, you can see there are earthworks in this field. Oh, what, there? Yeah, if we could just come up with the gate here. Um, I better shut the gate because of the cows, I think. I think it actually helps, helps it to show up because you've got this track down one side, but immediately off that, you see, there's this ditch. Yeah. This here? Down here, yeah, and then that rises up onto this bank, yeah. which I think was probably the boundary on this side. So, you know, you come down the ditch, up a bank, and then you're inside the... So all the... this is inside the yeah. precinct? and of course, it's dro the land's dropping away over there, so that's probably the boundary on that side. Just by it's... that little fence? Yeah, more or less beyond there. And if, yeah. I, if I actually sort of sketch it out on um, a bit of paper here, you see, what we've got is, is um, the road runs across like that. Yeah. Um, the house is sort of like that, with the bit at the back. Here's the farmer's house. We've got a trench going in there, because it looks as if there's a ditch coming across in that direction. And then we're over here, with a bank and ditch coming over there. And then it sort of drops away. So that could give us the sort of area with the road on one side. There are a number of Templar sites uh, where we've got various buildings left, and there's there's one. It's this one actually that's been excavated, and there's this is the layout of of this place, South Witham or South Witham in Lincolnshire. This was dug some years ago, 
and there's the gatehouse you see and you see it's, a, it's basically a rectangular area and it's full of buildings. Uh, and is that roughly the same size as this? It's going to be roughly the same sort of thing and it might mean you see that in this field here there are all sorts of barns and other buildings that uh, you know, go with it, and we shan't know that until we've done the sort of geophysics across the area. It does look quite lumpy and bumpy here. Templecombe was a large administrative centre for the Templars, who acted as a kind of medieval peacekeeping force during the Crusades. If Mick's right, and Jeff's house was on the western boundary of our site, and if the southern boundary was just beyond the dirt track at the back of this south field, then the site would have spread out over a vast area. Although much of the land is now covered by barns and a farmhouse, in the last hour we've managed to dig a trench here in the north field where Mick believes the topography suggests a northern boundary. Well, they've got the, the bank around this side, look, which is much more prominent. It's much steeper, isn't it? And yeah. this presumably is the corresponding well, ditch. Pre presumably, yeah, and then outside that you've got earthworks as well, which... Uh... It's clear that down here at the bottom of the north field we seem to have a classic bank and ditch, but is it showing up in our trench? So we're putting a trench in here to establish that this is the boundary wall? Yeah, I mean, hopefully we'd get ditches and walls and banks and so on, uh, you know, with some dating evidence coming out of them. Uh, Phil! Phil! Phil? Yeah. How are you getting on? How are you doing, Emmick? Well, we're a bit out of touch, so... Ah, uh, been... it's looking pretty good, actually. Okay. What about this wall down here that, uh, that's cutting across the trench? Yeah, see, there's just something that's... Uh... Is that an edge or is that no, just very much, No, it's very much an edge. Is any finds coming out? With well, this? this is the m most amazing thing about it. When we were when we were machining up through here, and uh, look what we uh, this is probably the best. Can exam. I get in your trench? This is undoubtedly the. Can I get in your trench? I'd rather. Well, oh, it took so long to answer. <laughs> <laughs> you see, look what we got oh, here. Oh, that's nice. Isn't that amazing? That's nice. These, wow. um, floor tiles. Fantastic. And there are just so many of these, they're so really, really nice. What sort of period would they be? Well, well these, these are going to be sort of 13th century yeah. things, aren't they? I mean, it's the sort of thing, these, uh, what they're calling caustic tiles, because it's a clay tile with a pattern put in, and then the pattern is filled up with a different coloured clay slip. Yeah. You can see it in section there, look. And the different families who give money to monastic institutions, they're, they're commemorated or whatever, with their coats of arms on the tiles. And these are the sort of things that the church would have had all over yeah. the floor and probably some of the other buildings as well. So have we now definitely established that this bank and the ditch is the outside edge of our precinct? I was afraid you'd ask me that. No, <laughs> <laughs> no I'm afraid not. Um, well, I what think... have we got in the bottom then, Phil? Well, we've definitely got a ditch down there, um, but it's nowhere near big enough to, to be a major defensive ditch. And it's What's it's just full up with modern rubbish. So this this particular ditch is just a field drainage ditch. And is, is that... So what we thought was the northern boundary at the bottom of the trench here is actually the line of a modern drain. Still, it seems we may have better luck at the top. Carenza's discovered a reference to a chapel here. Could it be Templar? The Ordnance Survey record shows us where the chapel was, which is obviously just here, where it was on this 1887 yep. map. Um, we know that the chapel was here in the 19th century. Yes. Um, and this is a photograph of what it must have looked like then. What we'd like to try and work out is whether that chapel is likely to have been the medieval chapel. It's, it's been pulled down now, and yeah. it was pulled down because it had been decided it wasn't the medieval chapel. We've got, we know that the Templars had a chapel here in 1309, uh, when one of the brothers was uh, uh, admitted uh, around that date. Uh, there's also a priestly connection that goes right the way back uh, to the Doomsday Book, in fact, 1086. So there is a nice clerical connection right the way through, which would suggest, at any rate, that there's been a chapel here, not necessarily on the exactly the same mm. site, uh, but could be. So we know there was a medieval chapel here. What we don't know is whether this chap this building that was called a chapel in the 19th century was that medieval chapel. Oh, get, get Beric to have a look at those, because if we could just cite the chapel, I mean, that would be a major achievement. Sure, that would be sure. nice to do that. Absolutely. Okay. Meanwhile, Beric summoned us to the long range of the manor house where he's found a beam he believes could be Templar in date. That's some beam, isn't it? It certainly is. It certainly is. It goes right across this building. We're, we're in the range that runs back from the main house on the front, on the roadside, and this I call service range. 
Now, what work I've been doing on both ranges suggests that both of them were actually very, very largely rebuilt in the early 17th century. Well, it's not much use to us, is it? Well, it isn't, but that's why I brought you here, because this fireplace, supported by the beam with this whopping great flue above it, great chimney flue, is Doesn't much more the oh. sort of thing you'd find in a medieval place. And it's, it's just possible that this is medieval that's yeah. incorporated and retained yeah. in the late upper house. So we find that out through dendrochronology. That's right, which is why we've got a dendrochronologist. <laughs> <laughs> well, OK, then, Robert, what do you think? Where are we going to go with it? Well, unfortunately, uh, this lower timber is not oak. It's elm, and we can't date elm at all. There's no reference chronologies. Right. However, there is this beam up above, and that looks like oak, and that looks a much greater yeah, it's uh, possibility. In, it's embedded in the fireplace as well, so it's not likely That's to be put right. in later, is it? That's right. So what you're going to do is you'll drill a hole into the wood and you'll have a look at the rings and then you'll compare those rings with ones that are already dated on that's the computer. That's right, yes. And what I'll do is actually take a, about a, a core that's about the size of a pencil mm. out of uh, this timber here. I am a little bit sceptical. Last time we used Dendro, it took mm. a long time before the results were processed. Yeah. Are we going to get it by day three? Uh, oh, certainly by day three, yes. Uh, I'll work That's from good. site here and transmit all the data back to the laboratory at Nottingham, and the computer there will uh, churn it out overnight, and probably, maybe even by this evening, but probably by tomorrow, we'll That's have right, a it? result, yeah, either yeah. A, you know, it might date, but yeah. it might not. We have to bear mm. that in mind. The core Robert takes from this beam will contain a series of rings. Each year of a tree's life is marked by a ring in its trunk, and the width of that ring is determined by the climate. The pattern created is unique to a particular time period, making it easy to date. Robert can compare the ring pattern found in this timber to thousands of others via a massive computer database. If a match is found, then we'll know the date when this tree was cut down. Let's hope it was felled in the 13th century. I know that the Knights Templar were set up in order to protect pilgrims who were on their way to the Holy Land during the time sure. of the Crusades, and they were called the Templars because the two people who started the order lived in the shadow of the Temple in Jerusalem. But what the heck were they doing with a big place here in Somerset? which is, after all, a few thousand miles away from Israel. True. Well, in order to finance their operations, they needed to attract to themselves uh, grants of great estates. They needed little administrative centres from which to collect in the rents and make sure everything was ticking over. And at Temple Coombe, uh, they planted what they called a preceptory, uh, of which there were many all over the country. And would this have been a big place? Well, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, only three knights at any one time seem to have been operating here, the preceptor and two others. We don't know an awful lot about what, what their organisation was, not until, <laughs> until they in turn gave way in the 14th century to another brotherhood of fighting monks. Hang, hang on. <laughs> another brotherhood? Yeah. The, well, the Knights of St John of Jerusalem, the Hospitallers, Hospitals yeah, yeah. and they took over the preceptory, ran it in much the same way, uh, and continued here right the way up until 1540, when along with all the other monasteries in England, they went up the spout courtesy of Henry VIII. And what happened to this place then? Well, like everything else, it was grabbed by Henry VIII, the Tudors, and granted away. Back at the north field, Carenza's discovered that the stone wall at the top of the trench aligns exactly with a wall of her chapel. That's the exterior north wall of the chapel, and that must be this wall. But, oh, actually, you've got, you've got, is that? That's the bottom of the doorway. That's, that's, that's the, the bottom, bottom of the doorway. doorway. That's the bottom of the do doorway. Yeah. There's a, the door sill and the jams rising up from it. We've only got the bottom stone with those chamfered corners. What date do you think this building is? Because the Ordnance Survey record said it was about 1200. 13th century is fine. Is um, it really? Yeah. Whether it's as early as 1200 is. But 13th century is definitely 13th, pre 14th yep, century. Yep, it's, it's, it's a good two centred arch, so that there are two arcs of a curve, and they actually centred on the opposite corners. So it's a pretty well an equilateral triangle. But it, it is starting to come together. I'm, I'm really pleased we've actually managed that to is, date That is that quite amazing. Hey, uh, that's looking good, isn't it? <laughs> I'll what do my is best. it? You can see the doorway there that you can see on the photographs. Um, Beric assures me this is 13th century 
This is a Templar. Hey, that's great. That's great. Right, yeah. Day <laughs> one. Day one. <laughs> if we've got this feature here, is there the possibility that looking on the other side of the wall, we would find more features? Yeah, well, that's why we're in the garden here. Yeah. We should go and have a look at that now and see if we've got the, the base of the wall coming out. Could that be part of the same building? Well, we hope so, yeah. It seems that while I've been concentrating on the house, Mick and Phil have started a second trench closer to the manor house in the farmer's strawberry patch. Oh, well, that's looking all right. Look, yeah. It's going to be a good trench, this, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, we've got one wall down here. Yeah, and you're coming out. Yeah. But that's not on line at all. No, it doesn't appear to be at yeah. the moment. Is it OK if I come across there? Yeah, Is certainly. It, so you're we not uh, cleaned it up or anything, have you yet? No, OK, yet. great. And get up on the wall. Can see whether it's actually in line, and you know clearly this is this is a long way out, and it must be somewhere down under there, about facing where Berwick is. If it runs through, if it runs through. Well, you can see how much higher we are still in here compared to the level at which we hit the chapel foundations down there. But I mean, it must be about a meter at least. Much as a meter. Yes. It Even at the bottom be, yeah, of the trench it could be there. about a metre. That's a lot of dirt. So the north wall of our chapel, with its doorstep, is under this modern field wall. Unfortunately, the east end of our chapel has been lost, buried under the farmer's new garden. But the remains of the walls of the west end may still exist buried under the strawberry patch here. Still, that's for tomorrow. Do you know, it's eight minutes to nine. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, we had a cheerful party. Cheers, yeah. everybody. <laughs> Cheers. 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 13 hours, we think, yeah? <laughs> Have you got on then, John, with the geophysics? Basically, we need to do more work tomorrow. We've yeah. gone into the central area. There's no sign of any structures yet. I think that means that we go on with the main trench that runs down the slope, and uh, perhaps we'll open up another trench on the south side just to see what that boundary's like there. Whether we do anything around the house, I think, depends a lot on um, what the dendro date is. You know, whether we're dealing with somewhere with, with a medieval structure into or not. I don't know if we can find that out at all. I'll give him a shout. Hello, any, any, any Robert? Could you ask him when we'll have the dendro date? Yeah, OK, one moment. I mean, if we, if we knew that it was... He's always waiting now. If we... Oh, tough, that's brilliant. If we knew we were dealing with a, you know, anything of a medieval building... Yeah. We, ..we probably wouldn't need to dig next to it to look at the foundations. But, but if that's not the case, we'd have to rethink it. It, it yeah. affects the whole planning and we've got yeah. something to go on and we know where to dig. Welcome, Robert. Give him a glass of wine first. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take that in a minute okay. before I see whether I deserve it or Have not. You got on? Um, what I've done is taken the six samples and tried to get the computer to combine them mm. where they match, if they match, and then compare that with something like 240, 250 <laughs> reference chronologies mm. covering the whole of the country from about well, 900 AD to sort of 1990. So what have you got? Ah, <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I wanted to. I, you know, I like to build up a bit of tension. Um, so I suggest that the timbers, all the timbers in that that range, were felled in the period sometime between, let's say, 1610 and about 1615. P probably, probably no later than 1620. Mind you, of course, we're dating the the range. Now, it's an archaeological question as to whether yeah. the date of that range relates to the date of the house or any yeah. part of the house. But well, it's... whatever. It's not Templar. And uh, end of day one. And I think probably the one thing that most of us would have put money on was that that fireplace yeah. would have been... Yes. Medieval. Mm. Never mind, we've got loads of evidence outside. We've got the tiles and we've got our window ledge or doorway, uh, whatever it is. Pottery. So already we've got a lot of evidence of the Templars. Let's find out what happens tomorrow down at the strawberry patch. <laughs> that is a pity. <laughs>about nine o'clock in the morning. Everyone's jumping up and down with excitement. Apparently there's something in the strawberry patch. Oh, if you're wondering what this bouncy castle thing is, it looks like it's going to tip down with rain any minute, so they've stuck that over it to keep everything dry. Mick, what's going on? Well, the big stones turn wow. up overnight. Oh, so we're just that. debating what they are. 
What do you reckon? Well, it's a bit high up in the sequence, we thought, didn't we? That's right. It's a good so deal higher. Uh, Remember the, the floor levels that we were expecting, given the, the doorway into the chapel? On the other side. On the other side of the wall. They're still a metre down. So we're a long way up in, in terms of the level of the ground, and therefore a good deal later. That's pretty yes. impressive. Well, we've got to it? sort out what its relationship is to the other wall below it, you see, we're, towards where Pete is. We suspect it's going to be a whole series of walls, um, but we've got to try and relate it to the existing boundary walls, which we've seen outside of medieval in their foundation. Yeah. So we may have more stuff like that. You've got a print out of that. Yes, we just tried to see whether we've actually got the colouring right. Yes. Yeah, so in the kitchen, that. our medieval ceramics expert, Eleanor Murphy, is piecing together a floor from the tiles out of Trench that's One. What that's what wondering. it was like when the when the glaze was off, but there's another one that we've got. You see, it's a much greener colour, so I think you're fairly oh, near that. Oh. It, we've got quite a few plainer ones as well. Would there yes. have been a sort of perhaps a checkerboard pattern around they, the edge? They is might be, possible? or we might have had a floor somewhere, but I don't think so from what we've picked up now, which was just alternate colours plain. But, but Eleanor isn't the only expert looking at floors today. Oh, yes. Berwick's intrigued by the pattern of stone slabs on the sitting room floor here. Jeff believes they show an earlier and completely different room plan from that of the present house. But Berwick has found the ghost of these earlier wall plans repeated upstairs in the 17th century joists under the present floorboards. So, unfortunately, these rooms were built 400 years after the Templars. There are two or three other little areas of Britain that have these at this particular time, the early 17th century, a service storeroom, the mm. same as you might have in some medieval houses, the old buttery and pantry, yeah. and, and it turns up at the centre of these new centrally styled houses that replaced the medieval plan of house. Um, which was dying out at the turn yeah. of the 17th century. Yeah. If there's nothing medieval in or under Jeff's house, and the modern farm has destroyed any evidence in the centre of our site, where will we find evidence of our Templar preceptory and its boundary? Mick's convinced we'll succeed in the south field, where geophys are already examining the bank and ditch he showed me yesterday. But over at the north field, there's some division in the camp. The surveyors are ignoring Mick's intuition about the south field and are looking at some earthworks of their own. The mm. dendro date on your big fire was... Disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> Very. <laughs> and now Beric's saying that all that bit is definitely, what, yep. 17th century? Yeah. How are you feeling? Conned. <laughs> <laughs> by us? No, by the um, estate agent that sold me the house. <laughs> um, well, it's disappointing, but obviously on a medieval site and the history is still on the site, so it's still a Templar site. So, and in fact, if you look at it logically, the whole of Templar is a Templar site, so it's not that much different. It's still, it's still there. Lunchtime, and the geophys results seem to confirm Mick's theory that we've got the remains of a boundary in the south field. I mean, this is a 40 metre wide strip going 90 metres down, so we've covered a large area. These might be structures, but I, I, I'm not sure. The main thing of interest is this clear line coming through. Is that the one and that shows us a slight earthwork? It partly coincides mm. with the slight earthwork, but it's not mm. straight on top. But I don't think this is going to be far down. I think you'd find it within the top half metre. That was all the confirmation Mick needed, and no time's wasted in getting a trench dug across the line of the bank and ditch here in the south field. Robin. Hello, Tony. Well, oh. actually, I wanted to ask you whether the Templars really were knights in shining armour, but I think you've answered the question for me. Well, the situation was that you've got this conjunction of, of monk and knight. Uh, total lack of show, and also lack of maintenance in terms of personal appearance. They didn't adorn themselves, took no heed of their appearance, were often unwashed, their hair covered with dust and their faces burnt by the sun. So you've got a, a, a very simple uh, display in terms of the way in which they went into battle. Even though these people were the younger sons often of, of aristocratic families, tracing them back to their grandparents to make sure, you know, they were uh, of pure descent, knightly, knight, knightly descent, uh, they didn't have their own heraldry 
actually on their shields, just the simple red cross on, on the white background. Mm. And this impractical white mantle which they had uh, yes. to indicate that they'd given up the yeah. dark life and entered on a life of celibacy, yeah. but terribly un impractical when you were going into battle in the heat of the Mediterranean. Uh, even they though they were scruffy, though, they were religious. Incredibly religious. I mean, we've got here the most sophisticated rule book which knocks the Road Traffic Act into the shade. You often and hear about the Crusaders being debauched and drunken. Was that true of the Templars? Well, certainly no Templar who followed the rule could afford to do that, uh, in, indulge in that kind of behaviour. I mean, we know they drank, yes. We've got details here in Templecombe in 1338 of them in one year brewing 78 quarters of, of grain to produce beer. But then everyone drank beer and wine. I mean, otherwise they died. If you drank the water, you'd add it. Now, there's only one thing guaranteed to drag Phil out of a trench, and that's a good pint. So it isn't surprising that he volunteered to find out how the Templars would have brewed this medieval ale. Well, we've got to wait till the temperature gets right. Yeah? Yes. We need a, a thermometer for that. Well, we haven't got a thermometer, not in, in days when these <laughs> beers That's what they did. <laughs> no. So uh, what we've got to do is to look until we can see our reflection in the, in the water. Yeah? Right? And then that's the right temperature. I can see my reflection in the water now. And it's so the temperature of the water is right. What temperature would that be then? That temperature would be about 150 degrees Fahrenheit or 65 degrees centigrade. Oh, God, look at that. It really works. So this, this process is what we're doing is now is called the, the mashing. That's right, it's mashing, yeah. And that's simply putting the grain into the into water. Into the water and soaking out the maltose sugar from the grain. From the grain. Yeah. OK, so what do we do? Well, we just... Shall we take that? Yeah, dip them in slowly and I'll stir mm. it around. God, it is like making porridge, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Can you smell that malt? Oh, God, ah, yes. Do you know what the average consumption was? Sometimes between a gallon and two gallons a day. Yeah? Food, yes. Because it was such a, a an essential drink. It was essential. You couldn't drink water because uh, if you drank water, you were likely to get typhoid. And so the water in, in brewing has been boiled. Perfectly pure to drink, yeah. Was it the sort of job that, that, that everybody would have been able to do, or you or were there particular no, the, brewers? No, the, the first pro professional brewers, if you like to call them professional brewers, were the monasteries. So, right. And that would have been the Templars as well, then? Yes, that would have been the Templars as well. They so, somewhere around here, they would have had a brewery? Yes, they would have had a brewery. And a mash like this is only the first stage in a medieval brew. But before the yeast can be added and fermentation makes it ready to drink, the mash needs to stand overnight. And what do we do? Just stack the straw with the hay yeah. round it. On the top as well to right. really insulate it down. OK. Well, of course, uh, in medieval times it was a longer process. As I said, this was left then until the following day or overnight and then it was strained off. Right. right? And another brew was made from the same grain. From the same mash? Yeah, the yeah. same mash. And they, um, could have, they could actually get three brews from one lot of mash? They three brews, and obviously three brews of different strength. So you had the first brew, which was a strong beer, right? Yeah. Then you had the second brew, which was a what they called a table beer. Right. And a third beer, which they called small beer. Right. And the small beer was what the children drank. So how, how, does, the how did their beer compare in strength to our own beers? Well, the table beer was probably about the same gravity or the same strength as uh, our own uh, best bitters would be today. So if, if, if the, uh, the best beer of today is only their equivalent to their table beer, their strong beer was a pokey off Daco then, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, definitely <laughs> was. <laughs> uh, excuse, uh, excuse me, Carenza, I am right in saying there is Evidence of absolutely nothing here at all. Oh yes, absolutely nothing oh, at all. I just wanted to get that clear. Yes, nothing. I mean, it's as empty as it looks. Yeah. Five o'clock and our new trench in the south field is finished, but there's no sign of the boundary. And so this hump 
that we thought was the outside boundary is just natural. It's just natural. Mm. Why did you? the bottom here, Mick. I think we have an answer for this. Yeah, this is a this is a land drain, isn't this it? This is a land drain. This is a you know fairly modern uh, clay pipe. That's all it is. Here. So we have absolutely no evidence at all That's right. of the boundary yeah. of the settlement. Well, yeah. not here. I mean, what I'm what I think we ought to look at now is there's another yeah. sort of linear feature yeah. about 60 meters that way just in front of this field boundary which runs more or less parallel with that field boundary before the barns and I think Shows we might as well the have what, a look at then that. why did you dig a trench here? Well, Mick thought it was better. Mick, well, yeah, <laughs> we, no, we agreed that, well. With, with this is the most prominent feature on this side of the site and uh you know it's 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 sort of almost on the edge where it drops away it was a logical place to put a wall in the ditch the geophysics seemed to show that i mean you would have been equally excited if we'd come out here and shown you a great base of a stone wall you can see it Tony. could have shown up you know you can see it does look like a bank oh yeah i was absolutely convinced by it you can see this trench and this little hump over it looks just like an earthwork so whereabouts is this here this other one when you've got a trench like that, yeah. Um, how do you plot it? Do, do you not? Do you just write down we dug this trench and there was nothing in it at all, or do you have to well, we, draw we, things? We, or what? we fix its position, which which Stuart will do, mm. and we'll we'll put things like the field drain on back of the bank at some basic dimensions, and then we'll have a record in the report that says it produced no fines, it. no structures, but you know there's then a record of it in case yeah. anybody else interprets it in a particular way. Somebody might come along, look at that as an earthwork again and think it was part of a boundary. It does mean that in, so. in, in archaeological terms we don't have to allow for that now. It's not part of the, the picture at all. It's quite yeah. nice, we have eliminated. This is the, the next, well, what is I reckon is the next. Which is you see. You yeah. can see there's a scarp it's coming. You're across actually, if you look down there, look. this side, Tony, you can, you look down here, you can see there's a, a drop down and a slight rise up well, again. It's, so it's, it's where I am here. Just this tiny little dip yeah. down to here, and then on and then down, down, down it. Look. Yeah. So if we do the same again across that, yeah. Yeah. Well, we still have a couple of hours of daylight left. So we might as well have another try at finding this elusive boundary wall. Let's hope we have better luck this time. This is it a wall, Mick? It's pretty thin. No, I suspect it's actually an early <laughs> form of field drain. Uh, you know, where they've just <laughs> dug a trench and they put stones in to help the field you know, keep the water off the top. Like the one in the other trench, only a bit earlier. That's exactly it. I don't think we've had a great deal of success in this field, really. So have we? we have no idea where the outside boundary of the settlement is. What are we going to do about it? We have no idea where. I don't think we've got a, we've got an edge anywhere, but we've now got a number of structures around in the middle. I was hoping that by now Hang we on, would. That's, yeah. a, that's the right way around. If you do it like that, look. And what we what we've actually got now is that this this isn't. This isn't. That, because of the Berwick survey and the dendro date is later, yeah. we've got the chapel at the top and we've got other structures coming out of the trench down here. So that the centre of gravity, if you like, has moved to something like that. Yeah. It's a smaller complex and much further north. And, and much closer to the village, yeah. 32 hours ago, finding two sides of the boundary to our preceptory seemed the easiest part of our task this weekend. Now it seems the most difficult in the time left to us. Well, I haven't got much choice. I'll have that one. No, no, that one. It's the end of another long day, and Phil's grain beer is about the only Templar-related thing to come out of today's labours. <laughs> but at least it means we've got something to drown our sorrows with. Mm, here we go. Which one's this girl? Day three, and we're right back where we started in trench one, although, as you can see, it's been raining a bit overnight. I think we've all just about decided that the house over there is a red herring, if you see what I mean. And uh, the only bit of medieval that we've got is around here. The big problem is where is the boundary to the whole monastic complex? We've stopped looking right over there, and now we're beginning to look over in this area. As you can see, Geophys and the surveyors are already out in that 
field looking for it. And it's quite interesting because I learnt last night that that's where they've been telling the archaeologists that we should have been looking all the time. But that's time team. Down here as well. Back in the house, tempers afraid and egos bruised. We finally got round to looking at the tithe map, something we should have done on day one. Because we should have, we should have looked at this. Well, I said it right at the start. I said right. it when we were at well, Wolfgang Well, I, I know you did, and you know, <laughs> and if we'd have seen that, if we'd have seen that on, yeah. on Friday, we wouldn't have been farting around in the fields out the back. Yeah. We cross. Why? Like cross with Templecombe. Take me a cup away. Because we should have looked at the bloody tithe free map before, because it's got an enclosure on it. Of the tithe free, free land. That's, Which the, means, that's the chapel in the well, corner. Well, that there, is Tony. Templar property. It's, it, it's, and it's, this it's, farm it's, is not Templar property. Jeff's house is here. But everything west of that line, which includes the present house and all the rest of it, is, is not in the tithe free mm. area. Yeah. It's land that they didn't pay any tithes on because they were exempt, because they were a monastic order with a lot of privileges granted by the Pope and other people. Right, and that, that sometimes survives right the way through and it gets onto the tithe map in the early 19th century. What we missed out was, was, a, was the, a, a really a very, very that, early yeah. stage of just mm. seeing what the map showed, you know. Why didn't mm. we look at the tithe map earlier? <coughs> because we, we're all because we're bloody <laughs> stupid, you know. I mean, we well, should it's have, just because we have to get started. Apart from the historian <laughs> who went and looked at it <laughs> this morning. What? I just think it's because we, we wanted to get started and there's, there's always this well, sort we of also, we fell to into start the, things before. We, we fell into the same trap as everybody has looked at this place. They look at this building and say, well, OK, it's got bits of features in it. It must be on the site of the preceptor. Everybody that's been here has looked at that great big fireplace in the kitchen. Yeah, and, the and kiln. Said, OK, if nothing Chamber. else is early, this must be. Just so you know. Some of us have been down. <laughs> you, you've <laughs> never thought of something in the right place at all, have you? Yeah. Over that side. Ah, anyway. well, we're going to get a lot of. <laughs> now we're going to be wise after ah. the event, aren't we? You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And what we, what we've been doing, we've been looking at the earthworks out that side. It looks as if the the boundary might be this feature down here. There's a there's a, a lane coming up to it which turns mm. at something here. So they, there's probably something which is this is butting against, and it suggests that the perceptory might be in that. I mean, sort this of area is more or less there. the same boundary as. Uh, it's on this, oh. and that sort of kind of says more or less with that boundary, right. doesn't it? Mm. There's some quite crucial points here. Yeah. And we need to do some geophysics to get. We've some started that. We've started that. We've started, we've, we've started a long that. transit yeah. right across, yeah. haven't yeah. we? Yeah. yeah. Well, what we what we're not in a position to do, I don't think, is to is to do any more excavation. But we've got sufficient resources to put in a, one investigation trench, haven't we? Well, well it that seems to be. I mean, in the next sort of three hours, we can get yeah. that surveyed. OK. But that wouldn't give you time I, I, to put... I mean, I'm, I'd... Well, that would only take us to half past one. Yeah. I'd be... I'd yeah. be... Mm. Four, I'd be prepared, Tony, to be, to be overruled if we, if, we, if we dig a trench across that earthwork, but we don't actually go into any There's of no the material there. There's no need to excavate mm. down, is there? It's you know. just revealed. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> because I love we... you. It's mellowing, isn't it? Because, yeah. mellowing. because we wouldn't have time to do... The proper recording job if, yeah. we, if we actually did go into it but yeah. at least we might see if there are any structures there we might just get some data material so the tithe map clearly shows that the areas of tithe free templar land were here to the north and east of our site the chapel's included but jeff's house isn't if stuart's right then we should find that the eastern boundary wall is somewhere at the bottom of the north field close to the fence here 11 o'clock, and the first readings from Geophys seem to suggest that there's something buried under the fence itself. But is it the boundary wall? The local farmer certainly thinks so. There was an old stone wall, which an old sort of dike, which ran along where this wooden fence is now. Oh, really? I just automatically assumed we were seeing sort of the footings for the wooden fence. I mean, it's quite possible that what we're seeing is that wall below that. So is it this wall here? That's been that used to be extended all the way along. That's what's on the 19th mm. century map. So right. Did you take you all the stone away, or no? It's no. all been buried there as yeah. such. Oh God, there's a lot of rubble there then. Well, so how, how would you feel about us putting a trench across <laughs> it? <laughs> <laughs> so, so what do you think that that wall might represent? Well, it's the boundary that goes round the edge of the area of tithe free land which includes the chapel which we're thinking is now the site of the preceptory um, and it's a boundary that seems to have, a, have been there for a long, long time and it would be nice to 
put a trench across it, we can probably fairly easily dismiss the stone wall, which is presumably post-medieval. But underneath that, there may be an earlier boundary feature that's more to do with the preceptory. Could this be our boundary? <laughs> I wouldn't start off. We can't waste any more time talking. We've got to start digging if we're going to find that wall. But there's a problem. Our farmer doesn't want his fence knocked down, so we'll just have to dig up to it. At last, luck's on our side. Our recited trench has revealed a wall, a good six feet away from the fence. Hey? I'm sort of wondering if the geophysics machine isn't playing up. I mean, there looks just a wall in full. Wow. It ain't very far. That's got to be something pretty solid in there, isn't it? Well, why don't you let him carry on scraping? Yeah, oh, ah, we, we can clean it up because we're not going to have time to do it otherwise. No. I think you, yeah, you keep know. going back. Meanwhile, Robin and I were off to church. In the 14th century, the Templars were disbanded and persecuted for heresy. I wondered whether this was why the Templecombe picture had been hidden away. I was wondering whether one of the reasons they might have been accused of worshipping the strange severed head mm -hmm. was because of all these various depictions of Christ's head that they're associated with. That's certainly a possibility. And it would also be a reason for a depiction like that to be hidden. Yeah. And, of course, uh, that, that would also go for a lot of the, of the documents uh, which might have incriminated them and could well be a reason why we have so little uh, detailing the day-to-day -day life of the Templars. Because they'd have been burnt or hidden in a panic. It could well have been. So yeah. does that mean that we know virtually nothing more about the Templars than you told me on day one? Well, actually, I've come across a, a detailed list of accounts uh, drawn up in 1338 by the Templars' successors, the Hospitallers, We've got, for instance, a complete list of all the, the servants, the hangers-on, uh, in addition to the three basic knights who were there. We've got, for instance, a, a squire, a cook, uh, a fisherman, a gatekeeper, clerk, Haywood, six other servants, two boys, two pages and a steward. Twenty-one in total. And uh, you know the chapel that we've been digging up? Yeah. We managed to find uh, evidence for the wine, wax and oil, which cost them six and eightpence, which was half a mark, and the stipend of one chaplain who was celebrating divine service there, 20 shillings. And suddenly, with a, a series of accounts like this, you get a, a freeze-frame picture of what life must have been like here, uh, what, 650 years ago. Back at the bottom trench, Carenza and Phil are starting to find a wall. But is it our boundary? I mean, if that is the frontage there, that should peel off quite nicely, I should, yeah. shouldn't it? And that's just tumble right, those that one, yeah. bits of fallen down wall that you're pulling away there. Do you want me to clean that up? It, it's looking a lot better along there, though, isn't it? Well, look, oh, Phil, that's all going straight down there, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I that. Coming... Right, oh, get in here, Anna. There we are. Yeah, you can see that quite clearly at the edge of that. Got some pottery here, Phil. Yeah? Oh, that's better, isn't it? Oh, God, that's Look medieval, that. isn't it? Base, isn't yes. it? Yes. Yes. Yeah, just got a. Tip just going down towards the. Yeah, there's the. Uh, well, there's the, uh, the side of the, the pot, and there's the base of it. Brilliant. That's. It's a nice big piece, that is. It's that nice sort of gritty fabric yeah. again, isn't it? Same as that tiny little bit we found just there. What do you reckon then for the date, apart from medieval? Well, it looks, I mean, that could be 12th century, couldn't it? I don't I think there's any that, problem yeah, with that. I suppose that is really... century, yeah. It's really a bit difficult with the old coarser wares, isn't it? It but... is, yeah, and we haven't got a room, so it's not really no. diagnostic, but I would be perfectly happy yeah, as well. I'd be with happy with that. 12th century, brilliant. But I'm very well happy to find it all together. It's <laughs> <laughs> bang it in the forest It's a bit bigger than the other bit we found. <laughs> Still, two pieces of pottery, we've got a major assemblage here by this. Hey, yep, we've got another bit. Another bit? Yeah, same old stuff. Oh, Look brilliant, at that. yeah. Exactly the same, isn't it? Dark black stuff with a sort I mean, of grit in it. We've sort of trebled our, virtually our, our medieval pot content. Nice, you've we? got the reddish inside, yeah. right there, and the black outside where you've got sort of cooking burning. Brilliant. Brilliant. That's all right then. This is looking like we've found our boundary wall. So how could Geophys have missed it? You know, you said it was at six metres, but you thought it was the fence. 
Yeah. Well, this is actually six metres. Oh, it yeah. is it, the anomaly we've got. Because we were so rushed, when we were looking at that black line, yeah. that clear black the line, under the fence. when we took the measurement, yeah. um, we thought it was right under the fence. But Claire said it was six metres from the start. And this is, and this is exactly six metres oh, down. Well, that's pretty so it, we were wondering how you'd missed it. You know, well, <laughs> you, you know, I never going. thought yeah. it could be that you were in a rush. <laughs> <laughs> With a probable boundary wall in our bottom trench, it seems that the foundations we've uncovered in Trench 1 are well within our Templar complex. The tiles found here give these stone footings a medieval date, and with our 13th century chapel at the top of the slope, we're probably at the heart of our Templar preceptory. Unfortunately, it seems the foundations of our chapel don't continue into our strawberry patch trench. All the walls here are much later in date and relate to the 17th century house. Ah, oh, Phil. Well, you've got a big smile on your face. We've got the preceptory boundary. Yeah? Yeah. Where? I'll come show, I'll show you. It's been staring us in the face all weekend, believe it or not. We know it was standing down here. Yeah. This is what we've got. We've got the footings of it here. But through here... How did you find this out? You just went for a little wander, did you? I would go and have a look. I would open my mind and see what came into it. Look around here. Can you see any other stone walls? Stone walls? All hedges, aren't they? Yeah. The field boundaries around here are all hedges. This wall carrying on here. Oh, what? Exactly the same <laughs> makeup. But look at it, look at the height of it down here. It's up to about nearly seven feet down here. Oh, God. This isn't a field boundary wall. <clears throat> look at it. It's amazing. Huge, great big, exactly the same sort of makeup. Yeah. It's your classic sort of monastic enclosure wall, tall, thin. Doesn't have to be particularly well made, it's only enclosing it. Look at the height of that. And the final thing, clinching thing, I think, is that if you... Does it return on that it, side? It goes down to here and turns there. This is exactly on the line of that tithe-free piece of land on the tithe map that was free of tax because it was the monastic <laughs> enclosure. And look, come and look through the wall. Oh, there's more, is there? Well, there's, there's it to clinch it. And you look through here, through the gap in this wall, you can see, much, see, you can see how much higher the ground is that Come side, on, then this side. This wall's been here for a long, long time for that much ground to have built up against it. Look, you there see, is, you're virtually a, a metre higher there than There is me. a good old drop, isn't it? And then you can so the boundary wall the has been here all the time, staring us in the face. But does this existing wall join up with the foundations we found in our bottom trench? Is this wall the boundary to the Templar complex? I think, I think it must be. You know, to find a wall like that, and it's you can see it's a good old width. That it's a, it's a you know meter or more in width. It ties up exactly with the so the one surviving piece of wall behind us. It hasn't appeared on any of the the later maps and so on. That uh, you know that's, it's bang where it should be in terms of the the boundary of the tithe free area. Uh, the clearly the boundary of the tithe free land is more or less the other side of those barns, crossed to the vehicles up there. Over it, by where the inflatable is? Yeah, up, up in the corner there, and we're down this wall down here, and somewhere across under that big mound of soil at the back. And then we pick up the wall underneath us, and it's coming across down in our trench here and across there. That's yeah, pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think we can be really quite pleased with that. It's to have the area, to have some idea of the boundaries, to have some idea of the, of the, the, the remains inside it, relocating the chapel, that's a great package, you know. So why were you so incredibly angry early on? We've been <laughs> mates for about 15 years and yeah, I've never yeah. seen you that angry. Well, I haven't been that angry for a long time. And I think it, it was because I think we could have got to this stage very much earlier if I, hadn't, if I hadn't have been stupid enough not to look at the most obvious thing to start with. I mean, I think we probably lost a day or more. And uh, we could actually have been in this paddock here probably by mid to late yesterday. But at least when Bob comes back, when Bob Croft, the county archaeologist, comes back on his holiday, we can say, Bob, you've got to be very careful what happens in that patch, because we now think it's part of the preceptory, whereas before we, we gave it no attention at all. These foundations suggest a stone boundary wall that would have stood about three metres high. A boundary like this would have been pretty impressive, but it was more for show than anything else. Inside the walls, our Templar preceptory would have consisted of a large monastic farm packed with barns, stables, a brew house, bakery and living quarters for the knights and their entourage. 
For these fighting monks, the chapel would have formed the focus of Templar life, and as such, it would have had an ornate tiled floor, probably funded by donations from rich local families, who'd been protected by the Templars while on crusades to the Holy Land. It looks as though for hundreds of years people thought that the Templar centre was up there and that that story would have been repeated and repeated right down to this present day. And even we were confused and thought that it was up there. But it now seems that actually the complex was more around here. And you can see why. When we first got here, it seemed that that fantastic view would have been in the Templar's back garden. But now it looks as though the whole aspect of the Templar complex would have been facing that way. And you can imagine if dignitaries were coming up from Shaftesbury, which is over there, you see that tree-lined route, that would have been the road from Shaftesbury. They would have seen, perched on this hill here, this rather grand-looking Templar complex. You can understand why they built it here.